Welcome, Welcome back, back to, to the Morgan Show. Show. I'm Sierra Burnett. And I'm Reagan Lydon. And today we'll be giving you guys a nice rundown of everything sports related at Morgan State University. Yo, YBH. Morgan State's women's basketball team remains undefeated at home and in the MEAC conference this season. The Bears now hold a record of 13-6 overall and are 9-0 at Hill Fieldhouse. They have set the records for the best MEAC start in school history and are now on a six-game winning streak. Senior Charlene Shepard received her fourth consecutive MEAC player honor and leads the team in rebounds, blocks, and steals. Senior Janaya Henson leads the Bears in scoring with 15.1 points per game, and this past Monday they defeated University of Maryland Eastern Shore. And here's Sierra Barnett on news with the indoor track team. Project, project, hey, hey, hey. The Bears track and field team traveled to Boston, Massachusetts this past weekend and not only zoomed to several top 10 finishes, but they also dominated the jumps, taking the men and women's long jump titles. On the women's side, Anar Shell won a double, earning the gold in both the long jump and the triple jump. Tia Jones finished third in the long jump. The men matched that gold with Derek Robinson jumping to a first place in the long jump and Jaden Rockbar placing fourth in the long jump. The throwers were also a force. Taryn Lambert and Johnnell Johnson finished number one and number two in the shot put and on the women's side. And John Purvis placed in both the shot put and the weight throw. He finished in third in the shot put and seventh in the weight throw on the men's side. Next, the Bears head to Penn State on Saturday, February 4th. Morgan State's women's bowling team finishes 13th in a Northeast Classic Tournament as there were 22 out of 25 team, top teams competing. Cheyenne Washington received an individual honor for her performance in the tournament. Washington averaged 217.8 and placed 10th among 181 bowlers. This landed her on the all-tournament second team. Morgan State will be competing in their next home tournament, the James Brown Invitational, February 10th through the 12th of 2023 at AMF Towson Lanes in Towson, Maryland. Morgan State football coach Damon Wilson and the Bears ended the offseason with an impressive list of recruits who joined the team during the early signing season. The Bears signed 19 future football student athletes to commit to the university. This season's class of athletes are from eight states across the country and Canada, with 11 signees coming from the DMV. Sharif Andrews from Boston was the first Morgan signee. Coach Wilson said he is excited about the early signees, stating, our coaches did a great job locally and nationally, ensuring that we were able to get some of our needs met. The women's students team has yet to find much success this season as they take their second loss so far to the Navy on seven. As Meryl Rose went the length in her singles match, but unfortunately fell short two sets to one. They face William and Mary next week in Williamsburg on February 12th. Hopefully we'll see an incline the season. It's just the beginning, but we see a lot in the future for them. This weekend features the Invesco HBCU Lexi Classic, an exciting men's basketball tournament created and hosted by actor Michael B. Jordan. This will be hosted at the Prudential Center in New York, New Jersey. Four men's teams from HBCUs will participate, Delaware State, Hampton, Norfolk State, and our very own Morgan State. The Bears tip off against the Hornets in the first of two nationally televised games. Supporters of all universities should be very excited for this tournament, as it will be met with lots of media coverage. Viewers can catch the game on TNT Network at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. This is the second time Morgan State has been invited to an opportunity to showcase talents of HBCU schools and celebrating our culture. The last, last season, we had the opportunity to be invited and participate in the first inaugural in NBA HBCU Classic at our Star Weekend in Cleveland, Ohio. And here's Sierra Burnett with news for the men's basketball team. Yo, 
IBH. Monday's loss against the University of Maryland Eastern Shore Hawks was a huge one for the Bears. They are now down four players, two of them being starters. The road to the MIAC tournament doesn't get any easier for the Bears as they begin a four-game road trip this Saturday. Morgan's men's basketball team had a rocky start to the season, losing three of their first four games in November. Since December, the Bears have been a bit more steady. They went on a six-game winning streak until they dropped a game to Howard. They bounced back strong with a victory over Norfolk State in January, defeating the MIAC champions. They lost to Delaware State by two points last week. This past Monday, the Bears had a blowout loss at home, 58-72 against UMES. The Bears are no longer undefeated at home following Monday's game. They have a home record of 8-1, with eight games remaining in the regular season, only three of those games being at the Hillfield House. The Bears will be without their senior guard, Malik Miller, for the rest of the season due to an ACL injury. They will need huge contributions from Will Thomas, Cameron Hobbs, and the rest of their bench to stay above 500. We're confident. We're very confident with the guys we have left. I mean, that's why you get, what, 13 scholarships? You know, everyone's got to be on it, earn their work. You know, next man up, as we say. And, we're confident if we play smart, because we're going to play hard. That's one thing, if you watch our team, we're going to play hard. we got to play smart and play together. If we share the game and, and, and play smart, we're going to be a tough out for anybody. Coach Brodus stressed defense as the top priority this season. The Bears are currently the number one rated offense in the MEAC, averaging 80.6 points per game, but fourth in defense, giving up 71.2 points per game. Morgan State has a conference rematch against Delaware State University at the Invesco QQQ Legacy HBCU Classic hosted by Michael B. Jordan. This will be the second out of three times that Morgan State will face the Delaware State Hornets, who they recently lost to in Delaware 64-62. And this is Sierra Burnett reporting for The Morgan Show. Now we have Lake Marion with more on women's vaulter Aishana Eisner. Project, project, hey, 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 hey. Morgan State's junior Aishana Eisner continues to add to the list of her accomplishments. Last Friday, Eisner set the school record in the pole vault, jumping 10 feet 10 inches while competing in the Virginia Institute Invitational. She finished seventh overall in the indoor event. Morgan track and field assistant coach Janice Smythe credited Eisner for working hard and building her skills to reach the record. She can vault uh, well, but sometimes she doesn't have full confidence in herself. So I've been trying to work with her on that. And I think once we get past that, she'll definitely vault a lot higher. Eisner picked up pole vaulting in her home state of Pennsylvania. She became a champion in high school and said she joined Morgan's team because she felt she could be competitive. When preparing to jump, her coaches tell her to envision going higher and higher over the bar. Um, my coaches always tell me to see myself doing it before I go. So I really take the time before I jump to see myself do it and then I go. So what's next for Eisner? The goal is always to get better and better. Uh, she wants to win the conference indoor, the MAC conference indoor. We won outdoor last year, and so our goal is to win indoor as well to add to her outdoor title, and of course, you know, getting more PRs and vaulting as high as possible. With the bar set higher now for Eisner, she will continue to pursue her goal of adding more titles and record breakers to her name. Lake Marion from The Morgan Show, Go Bears! Now I'll bring you Kamal Arline with news on the women's basketball team. Midway through the season, the Lady Bears hold a record of 13-6 while being undefeated in MEAC play. They play South Carolina State at home next. Coming from winter break, the Bears are on a six-game winning streak. They hope to keep the streak alive before starting a three-game road trip. I'm here with freshman guard Gabby. Coming off the bench, what was your mindset coming into this game? My mindset was to be the spark off the bench and come with the most intensity on the team.
Janiyah Hilson came into the game as one of the best free throw shooters in the MIA, at a perfection 94% from the free throw line. Guys went into the half with just a one point lead. What were y'all mindset going into the second half? Um, our mindsets were we knew it was going to be a fight all the way through, but we knew we were the better team, so we knew we had to come out and be dominant. Um, and that's what we focused on going into halftime and coming back out. Um, I feel great about being a leader um, and motivated for the team. I'm ready for anything that's thrown at me this season, um, as, as well as leading my team to hopefully a championship. What are your goals to finish this season? A MEAC championship. There you have it. They win a MEAC championship. Make sure you continue to watch them as they continue their journey of becoming the 2022-2023 MEAC champions. What's up, Morgan State? Bringing to you a new segment, Courtside Conversations. I'm your host, Morgan Lydon, and today I will be doing a profile on our new freshman, Rob Lawson. How are you today? How are you doing? I'm doing good. All right, so I just have a few questions to ask you. First question being, how was your recruitment process throughout high school and choosing colleges to play after basketball? Uh, my recruitment process throughout high school, I mean, it was definitely a learning process. I mean, I definitely was overlooked throughout the years, so, you know, I, definitely, I had to take a different route than other people. Um, but me, by trusting my ability, what I can do on the court, off the court, I know eventually more college will contact me. So right. it was a slow process, but I believed in myself. All right. So through that journey with learning all those things and how the obstacles that you have to overcome, what brought you to choosing to play at Morgan State University? Uh, really, um, just coming as, I mean, my first visit, it felt like a family, you know, uh, seeing the, the crowd interact with the, the players, you know, it was a whole bunch of love, so I might as well just play in front of a group of crowd, you know, show love every day. All right, and you did speak on it, gave you a family presence. Is that something that you felt was crucial in choosing a school for you since you are not from Baltimore? Mm -hmm. And you are actually, if I believe what I'm told from a couple of sources, you are the only freshman on the team at the moment? Yeah, I am. Um, it definitely, it, I mean, that definitely played a huge part, uh, definitely coming where it felt like a family, you know, being somewhere away from home, but coming, I mean, stand, being somewhere away from home, but also being at home. So, you know, I definitely felt comfortable being around Morgan. Right. So you pretty much just got a home away from home. Yeah. And we love to hear that um, here at Morgan. Also, Morgan likes to take pride in the fact that a lot of our athletes do well, not only in the court or on the field, but as well in the classroom. So what are your goals and aspirations for that? And academics-wise? My um, aspiration in the classroom, um, definitely, you know, just being that leader, you know, try to come to the class early, you know, being an honorable student, uh, showing my ability of what I can do off the court so I can play a huge part when we on the court. Right. All right. And so we already got that covered. He's not trying to like anything in the classroom. So what are your goals to do on the court? Uh, on the court, um, you know, just being that you know, that little, that little pit bull, I guess, a little freshman. Um, just coming in with a mindset to, you know, uh, win every game, you know, come in where playing with a, a group, uh, a, a big group of guys, you know, just trusting them, they trusting me, and um, you know, just trying to get to that championship. All right, so that's great to hear. And so I would like to ask you, so far this season, you guys have played three non-conference games. Mm -hmm. How has that gone for you? And what do you think you've learned from those games that will make you guys or lead you guys to the MEAC conference this season? Uh, I mean, we definitely, and I, we definitely got thrown that fire early, you know, two bit non-conference games. Um, it definitely gave us a huge learning process to see what we all can do on, um, and what we can improve on. So. You know, just coming back to practice and, you know, everybody holding each other accountable and, yeah, to get to the next game. All right. So that's great. That's all the questions I have for you today, Raw. And that is all for today's first segment for Courtside Conversations. I'm your host, Rick Lally. I'm out. YBH. 
Hello, my name is Candace Beza with the Where Are They Now segment in the Morgan Show. And today we have Miss Dorothy Buford, who is a Morgan State Hall of Famer, student athlete at her time here at Morgan as a volleyball player. Thank you for coming to the show, Miss Buford. Thank you for having me. Okay, my first question for you would be, how was it like being a student athlete and balancing, you know, volleyball and your academics at the same time? Um, I think it was easy. So I didn't have a strong memory of the academic stuff, um, just because probably it's been too long. <laughs> but I do remember going to classes and struggling through it. But coming from a high school that was college preparatory, they put a heavy emphasis on being able to juggle, as you say, academics and um, sports. Mm -hmm. and what so I was well prepared going into it. So I did high school sports um, all four years and learned to adjust to the, the demands of sports as well as academic stuff. Mm -hmm. And what do you think got you to that point of being a Hall of Famer? What steps did you have to take in order to you know, achieve such a high goal and achievement in itself? Well, initially, after hearing how, how prestigious the honor was, I was like, well, I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself. But uh, when I stopped to think about it, um, only athletes who are able to be able to make it are the ones who do four years, right? If I was just there two years, I'd have half as many kills, half as many blocks. Um, if I was a, if I wasn't a student first, then maybe I'm ineligible, right? And maybe I leave college because I'm ineligible, not maintaining grades. So the fact that I was able to maintain um, good grades and juggle sports, I was able to do four years. So after having that length of time, if anybody enough time, they could do great stuff. Is that's my thinking. Um, so having that that time and working hard because you got to work hard in the classroom to maintain eligibility, you work hard on the court. And I love the game. I, I still enjoy the game and I always wanted to dominate at it at any position I played on the court. So what has helped me is God first, right? God giving me the ability, uh, granting me the opportunities to play at Morgan. Um, and then, you know, preparation meet and opportunity I prepared for it um, in the off season you know strength training um, keeping a ball around being able to go get into a gym and compete usually I was competing against guys but you know I that's that's what they had to offer and what do you think makes a good team dynamic what do you feel really helped you be the best you can be on the court and off as well psychology as much as I downplay the people who want to master in psychology, I mean, uh, major in psychology as an undergrad, uh, psychology, knowing about relationships, knowing how to manipulate them to get the most out of people. A lot of people think of manipulation as a bad word. Manipulation is not a bad word. It is a word used to describe um, you know, what you're utilizing, how to, how to spin things. So keeping my teammates encouraged, keeping them hopeful, letting them know I believed in them, willing to work with the, the person who's having the most difficulty on the team. Maybe if they're not a strong passer, I need to go pass with them so I can share my knowledge, my experience to give them that encouragement to do. The other part is communication. I strongly believe in communicating uh, on the court, letting them know what their roles are and that I was fully ready to back them with their position. So I talked a lot on the court. I was giving play by play. I was telling, I was yelling the name who I thought should get the ball. Um, uh, at the same time, I was not, uh, I was, I was not hesitant to get the ball. So I believe in, in leading by doing, and I didn't mind hitting the floor for the balls. Hmm. And how, well, first of all, tell us about your current career now and how being here um, as a student athlete at Morgan State University prepared you for your current job. <laughs> oh, so being at Morgan, I, I was prepared by learning on the fly. 
um, being able to uh, handle adversity um, when things didn't go according to plan. Uh, and right now, my life did not go according to plan, but all by God's plan. So I am a real estate broker. Um, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I'm a coach. I'm anyone I want to be <laughs> at this point in time. I That's what I'm doing. So I'm not doing anything with what I majored and mastered in. Uh, I got my master's at Sac State um, in psychology. I'm not doing psychology. I'm coaching. I am doing real estate. But it all involves relationship with other people, relationships with coaching and players, relationships with clients purchasing houses or selling houses. You've got to be able to communicate and and to encourage and, and give people a sense of comfort. So I would say learning to work with less than um, less than the tools necessary has enabled me to do what I do now. So at Morgan, my first two years, we did not have a Hillfield house. It was being built. So all of our games were off campus, which means all of our practices were off campus. And we practice from 4.45 to 7, 7 a.m. And then we'd go to class. Um, that's, that's just how it happened to go a lot of time. I remember rushing to the airport to make flights to get to games. You know, that it's full of adversity. You learn to deal. You learn to survive it and, and make things work. So in my current position as um, owner and, uh, you know, partner in, in a couple of other businesses. So I own my own brokerage. And speaking of adversities, what are some things that you do now and that you did back then when you faced these challenges or obstacles? I laugh. <laughs> I still laugh. That is, you, you, you're not going to be able to control everything. Uh, and the, the moment you realize that you control very little, that all you can control is your reaction, well, you're, it, as a GI Joe would say, it's half the battle. So um, I would say that. And my last question for you would be, what is some advice do you have for the current Morgan State volleyball team? To continue to find resources to improve your skill. Um, never stop learning. So even, even today, I'm not playing on the court. You know, I'm, I'm coaching, but I'm still learning what the best practices are. I'm, I'm learning how to coach hitting. I know how to hit as a player. Um, I can teach it on the fly, but I still refine my skills and learn what is a better technique. What can, what are we aiming to do? And I remember always practicing, always trying to get better. You could always get stronger. You could always improve your, your vertical uh, jump, but um, refining the techniques of, of hitting, refining the techniques of passing, put some research into it. If you are, are really serious about your job as a student athlete, because it is a job, you do get, I say paid by a scholarship maybe, right? That, that is my job. I'm going to be good at my job. I want to be better at my job continually. No matter how long I've had the job, I'm looking for efficiencies and ways to perform better and faster. Um, so that is, that is my advice. Find a way to improve. If you want to improve your hitting, start looking now. Thank you so much, Ms. Buford. Once again, my name is Candace Beezer, and this is the Where Are They Now segment with the Morgan Show. Thank you so much for tuning in and being able to do this interview, being so far away. Um, just thank you so much for being here and you know giving your best answers and your most honest answers. Yeah. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for having me and uh, good luck out there to pick your bears. Thank you so much. Well, that's all we have for you guys today. Thanks for joining us and watching our recap of everything MSU sports. I'm Reagan Lydon. I'm Sierra Burnett. Have a good day. Project, project, hey, hey, hey.
project, 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 project,